Hey everyone, it's Mark again with another video on Flight Sim 2020. Today's video is focused on how to capture amazing screenshots from your time playing the game so that you can share them with friends and use them as background wallpapers. I've been looking to improve the quality of the thumbnails that I take for the videos on this channel and I thought I would share the process that I went through of trying to learn some techniques to make them stand out a little bit more. I'm going to start by covering all the features that are available in the game to take a screenshot and then I'm going to move on to look at all the different cameras and settings you can use to get your airplane in just the right spot to get that perfect screen grab. After that, I'm going to move on and look at a few different photography concepts that are useful for taking screenshots in the game as well. Finally, I'm going to wrap up by giving you a few ideas of things you might want to try in the game to get a pretty cool looking screenshot. Alright, let's start with the basics of how to actually take a screenshot. The answer isn't as straightforward as you'd expect it to be because how you actually go about doing it is going to depend on how you've bought and installed the game. If you're running in Steam like I am right now, all you have to do is press the F12 key, which is going to take the screenshot and save it in the default screenshots folder that's configured in Steam. It's a little bit more complicated if you've installed the game from the Microsoft Store. There's no built-in feature in the game to take screenshots, so you have to use external features to do it. The easiest one that I've seen is to bring up the Xbox game bar by pressing the Windows key and G. In that screen, there's going to be an option to choose to take a screenshot. Very similar to Steam, it's going to save it to a folder where you can just view all the screenshots that you've taken previously. For some reason, I can't get OBS to capture the game bar, so I'll put a screen grab of what the game bar actually looks like in the video right next to me. Another option, if you have an NVIDIA card, is to install GeForce Experience. It also has a built-in screen grab feature, which you can activate using the Alt F1 key. I believe there is an equivalent for AMD cards, but I'm not familiar with those, so if someone does have experience with it, please feel free to put it in the comments below. Before I move on to all the tools that are available in the game to take a screenshot, I just want to remind you if you do get some value out of this video, to please make sure to hit like and subscribe, and if you have any comments, put them in the comments box below. Alright, with that out of the way, let's look at a few of the tools and features that are available in the game to get that perfect screenshot. There are three different camera modes that you can use to take screenshots. There's either the cockpit, external, or showcase. The one that I recommend to use is the showcase camera. The showcase camera is effectively a drone that's following your airplane and it has a camera mounted to it. That allows you to move the drone wherever you want and however you want to get the shot exactly how you want it. That could even potentially mean not even having the airplane in the shot as well. I might decide to just take a screen grab of that cruise ship out at sea. The single best way to control the drone camera is with an Xbox controller, and that's what I'm using right now. It really makes controlling the drone a lot more natural than having to learn all the key bindings that are associated to it in the game. If you're familiar with using an Xbox controller, it's going to feel really natural to just do all of the different operations that you can with the controller. I'm on the ground right now, but if I were in the air, it would be pretty difficult to control the airplane from showcase mode. So if you're trying to take a screen grab from this camera, I usually recommend either using the active pause option available from the menu, or the other option is to set the autopilot to hold either a heading or a nav fix, as well as potentially holding your altitude. It's just going to free you up a little bit more to be able to focus on the drone rather than having to worry about the airplane crashing into something. Now, it is still possible to control the airplane from this view. If you press the C button when you're in showcase mode, it's going to alternate between allowing you to control the airplane like I am right now. You can see I'm moving the rudder. And if you press C again, and I try and move the rudder now, you can see nothing's happening, but I can move the drone camera. It's always one or the other. The other thing to remember about the showcase mode is there are a bunch of fixed cameras as well. They're placed all around the aircraft and can sometimes give you some pretty cool views that you might not think of to do yourself with the drone camera. The only thing I don't like about the fixed cameras is as you can see, the heads up display is shown on screen. I would have expected there to be some way that I can actually hide the heads up display, but I haven't found it yet. So if anyone has any ideas on that, feel free to put them in the comments below. 
Finally, another tool that you can use to get your airplane in the right position for your screenshot is called slew mode. You activate slew mode by pressing the Y key and then the Xbox controller is just going to be mapped exactly like it is to the drone camera and you'll be able to move the airplane around pretty much wherever you want it to get that perfect screenshot. So what you can do is place it where you want, hit the active pause button, come out of slew mode, and then it's just a matter of moving the drone camera to where you want it to get your screenshot exactly how you want it to look. I've done a previous video on slew mode, so if you do need a quick refresher on how to use that mode, I'll add a link to it right above me. Another feature of the drone mode is that you can actually change the focus. Right now, everything is perfectly detailed no matter how close or far we are from the airplane. But with a real camera, if you were taking this exact same picture, a lot of the background would be at least slightly blurred. You can achieve that effect using the drone focus mode if you set it to manual. So as you can see, I've set it to 10% now and the airplane is in perfect focus, but everything in the background is just slightly blurred exactly like you would have if you were using a camera to take this picture. All right, let's move on to the slightly more artistic part of the video, which is all about composing a screenshot and how to make it stand out. There are a few rules of thumb of photography that you can use in the game to build a nice screenshot. Imagine the screen is broken into three horizontal and three vertical lines that are equidistant from each other, effectively splitting the screen into nine sections. What you can do is place objects along those lines instead of centering the subject of the screenshot. For example, if I want to leverage the horizon and the airplane, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the airplane off to the right here. I'm going to lower my altitude so that the airplane is near that top third of the screen. And I'm going to put the horizon right around there. So you can see the screenshot is now going to have a few objects along those imaginary lines. I feel like it makes for a much more balanced picture in this case. Another common technique in photography is to consider how many points of interest you have in the image. The airplane is likely to be your main point of interest, but having a few secondary points of interest can help to bring more interest and intrigue to your photograph. In this case, I've got a few options that I can work with. I've obviously got the airplane, I've got the cruise ship in the background, I have all the buildings off to the right, and I even have the runway right there. What I'm going to try is to try and get the cruise ship just on the right hand side of the screenshot. And to do that, I'm obviously going to have to get a little bit more altitude. I'm going to turn the drone so that I'm not seeing the city anymore because that would be just a little bit too much. And now I'm going to adjust the position of the airplane just like that. And you can see I've got now the two points of interest in my screenshot and they're both following the rule of thirds as well. Another option that I could do, I do have this very pretty palm tree right here. So I could do something with that in the sense that I put the airplane somewhere a little bit up higher and have the palm tree be the secondary point of interest of the image. Another thing to think about are the colors that you're using in your scene. Having contrasts of light and dark are going to help make the picture pop. And you can often achieve that by simply playing with the different time of day and weather. For example, if I want to have a slightly bigger contrast of light, I can obviously turn the camera into the sun, but I can also just directly change this by just scrolling and looking for the lighting situation that I want for my screenshot. Like this, you can see there's a pretty big contrast between the ground, which is much darker because the sun is just coming up, and the sky, which is only just starting to turn blue. This brings me to my next point, which is something called the golden hour of photography. That's usually just after sunrise and just before sunset. Depending on where you are in the world, you'll be able to achieve a fairly red sky as well if you choose the right weather preset. So if you put it to few clouds, you can see right there that the sky has already turned a lot more red than it would have otherwise. So again, just play with the presets, play with the time, figure out what works best for the screenshot you're trying to create. 
Another thing you can do if you want to see if you're using enough of the color scheme available to you is to open the screenshot that you've taken in a tool like paint.net which is going to allow you to have a look at the histogram or levels of the image. The levels are going to tell you how much of the color range you're actually using and it might inform you to a decision to either make it more light or darker depending on what it's telling you. Lastly, consider the field of view of the screenshot that you're taking. A tighter shot gives more focus on the subject of the photograph, but at the cost of depth perception. So if I get in really close like this, obviously it does look pretty cool, but you can't really tell the depth of the image. On the other hand, if I get too wide, you're going to lose the focus completely on the subject of the image, which is still supposed to be the airplane. It's all about finding the right balance that works for your image. All right, with that covered, I'm going to wrap up with a few concrete ideas of where you could go to get your next amazing screenshot. One thing that I really like doing is finding a real picture that I want to reproduce in the game. So you can either go on Flickr or 500 Pics or any other website really, find a picture of an airplane that you like, and then you can just go into the game and try reproducing it exactly as it is, and then maybe tweak the time of day, the weather, something to just make it pop a little bit more. You can see in the video that I'm showing you right now that I'm trying to reproduce a shot from the Air Force One landing at Grand National Airport. But the photogrammetry isn't quite up to snuff in this area, so it doesn't look quite as impressive. Yet another option that I tend to forget about is to take a screenshot while you're still on the ground, either with the plane on or off. For that, you'd probably want to find an airport with a nice backdrop of mountains or something to make it stand out. Something like I'm showing you right now at the Queenstown Airport in New Zealand. Don't forget you can also take cockpit shots as well. Most commonly what I've seen for these is that when you're coming in on landing and it's nighttime and you can see all the lights of the airport and the runway lit up in front of you, just like I'm showing you right now at LAX. It's probably best to zoom out as much as possible for these because it'll allow you to get a little bit of a wider shot and you won't just get the instrument panel in your screenshot. Finally, another option is to just fly around somewhere that's known for its views. That could be a national park, or even just have a look through all the different landing challenges. There are a bunch of picturesque places in there as well. Anytime you're flying around in the game in one of those areas, you're bound to run into opportunities for some amazing screenshots. And with all of that said, I'm going to wrap the video up here. As usual, if you have questions or comments, put them below. And please make sure to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw. See you next time.